looks nothing like human anatomy, guys. Okay. If, if somebody know. mixed in like a human steak in there, you would know because it's, it's very, very. No, you wouldn't know because you don't know what food looks like. I would know. Very similar. You are standing on very like thin ice. If you know, you, you really have no ground to stand on. I know. That's a pretty good definition of veganism, isn't it? Really? I don't get it. So many improvements and it's just like everything aligned. I don't burn in the sun. I don't sweat. I know it sounds crazy. I can attribute that to restricting. They probably think that's crazy. Again, they just don't know why that happens. Omega-6 out of the diet. That's why. That... Okay. Uh, see, this is where it's just getting. Okay. He doesn't burn in the sun and he doesn't sweat now. Nope. I'm a window cleaner. I work outside for hours at a time. During the summertime, even in England, it's very sunny. I see lots of people smothering their kids and themselves in sun lotion and sun cream just so that they don't burn. I used to be one of those people. I used to burn like crazy, even in the UK. I would go out, I'd get red on the top here, red nose, red neck. Well, now that doesn't happen. And the reason why is because I don't consume plants, which increase photosensitivity. This is quite basic stuff, but if you don't know about this, then you're gonna laugh and giggle like a child because you just don't get it. So eating nothing but meat, even though I, I know, I've heard meat sweats are a thing. Yeah. So at least. No, meat sweats are only a thing when you consume it with abundance of carbohydrates as well. I don't sweat ever eating meat, not once. I know a lot of people talk about meat sweats. Yeah. But, uh, so since he's eaten beef, what is it? Beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. Since that's what he's been eating, doesn't sweat and doesn't burn doesn't. in the sun. The reason why I don't sweat, I mean, I'm going to sweat a little bit, but I mean, I've even been out in the summer working, window cleaning for hours, no sweat, nothing. I used to sweat buckets, right? The reason why this is, is we don't just sweat because we're overheated, but the skin is the largest organ on our bodies. And we use that organ to rid the body of toxins. Well, guess where all the toxins are found? In plant foods. Grass-fed beef doesn't contain any toxins whatsoever. There's no inflammation going on. There's no toxins coming in. But plants contain every single toxin known to man. All the natural defense chemicals and pesticides, but then they're also sprayed to death with pesticides, herbicides, all of which are very toxic. Class A drugs derive from plants. Caffeine and sugar, the substances, come from plants. UV radiation That's has no effect on his skin. I didn't say it has no effect. UVB rays have some effect on my skin, but the best sunscreen is a natural process where the body produces melanin. If you put sun cream on all the time, you're not going to produce as much melanin. And if you're eating plants, you're going to be hypersensitive to the sun. Can we, if this is true, can some, can some scientists study this man, please? Like, can we... We're only reacting to each other's videos right now because of our ancestors and what they did. And what they did was roam the earth hunting with their bare skin out. They weren't afraid to get in the sun. Do you think those guys burnt? They just really burnt severely and got skin cancer because how the hell would we be here reacting to each other's videos right now? You're just flabbergasted over things that you don't know about. Can we put, can we, I would love to see, I would personally, well, I don't know if I do that, but I would, I would love to see um, some actual tests on carnivore diets, some actual the, clinical Yeah, there trials. should be like carnivore. They'll be coming, don't worry. Mythbusters. <laughs> Where they like look into the stuff because like yes. he's not giving any kind of connection to anything like again he didn't get the testing done before he changed his diet what testing would i have needed i was chronically depressed because i didn't want to live that that doesn't need a test or a study that's just the facts that we don't he didn't even do a self-test like it's one thing if he was tracking certain things, like i stayed in the sun for five minutes and i got no burn <laughs> you know he's just kind of just saying this is a self-test how is that not evidently clear our personal experiences are self-tests i used to eat lots of plants and now i eat zero plants I used to burn in the sun because I have a memory. I can report on that. And now I don't burn in the sun. Again, you can accept it or not. That's okay by me. Things. Now, maybe he'll, maybe he'll show us. Maybe he did. Who knows? Right. But... Okay. That's why that happens. No pack on my teeth. No wax in my ears. Uh, everything that these people are documenting that happens when you go on a car. I don't know why they're shaking their head. Think about what causes problems in dentition. What causes cavities? It's plants. Carbohydrates. Sugar. That's where they come from. Plants. I don't consume any plants. So I'm not consuming any sugar. I have really, really clean teeth. My teeth feel cleanest after I've eaten a big steak. One of our diet, it's true. So and since that time, I've See, not... but okay, but that's what we just said. He said everything that people have said is true, is true, right? Right, so in that situation, I'm basically telling the world that I also heard anecdotes previously from people thinking like, what? And now I'm saying, do you know what? I've actually done the experiment myself. And now I can attest to the fact that yes, what they're saying, what they're reporting in terms of outcomes is true because I've witnessed it, I've experienced it myself. It seems like he, when, when you go into something with certain expectations, mm -hmm. right? So like if I see, let's say everybody in the gym is taking sugar pills 
and they're taking the sugar pills and they're saying, oh, dude, when I take these pills, you get jacked. You put on 10 pounds of muscle. My brain is going to interpret any gains uh, that after, you know, if I take the pill, any gains that I achieve after those pills, I'm going to attribute to the pills. I understand the point you're trying to make, but that's not the same. You can't conflate my anecdote with your gym scenario with sugar pills, which you're basically taking anyway because your food's made out of it. Just because I'm already expecting that, right? right. It's, this is classic placebo. I had any symptoms. I wasn't expecting it. I was hoping for it. And lucky me, I guess, right? Of depression and things have only actually got better. So I don't get any cravings anymore where it took me maybe about four months to completely rid all of the cravings. I was still thinking about bread. I was still thinking about pasta. And I really love pasta. And I really <laughs> love pizza, man. Yeah. Woo! But now I can care less. In fact, I look at that stuff like, what the hell is that? What on earth is that stuff? Poison. So I've mostly been consuming beef. I just <laughs> I look at pasta like, oh, poison. Right. This so is what I'm eating. This. Yes, poison. It's metabolized as glucose. Glucose is toxic. You can't have any more than half a teaspoon in your blood because that's poisonous. So then if you're eating all this sugar all the time, what do you have to do? Keep producing insulin, right? That's inflammatory. Yes, toxic. Oh, God, that fat is just so nourishing to the to the soul, not to the heart. It's very, very nourishing. It's one of the most nourishing things that any human being can consume. That's where you get things like vitamin A, which doesn't exist in plant foods. You know, you have your beta carotenoids and all these things. We have retinol. So you're looking at retinol. You're looking at D3, not D2. You're looking at K2, not K1. Fatty acids, right? Omega-3s, DHA, EPA, which don't exist in plant foods. Yes, it's very, very nourishing. Heart, but to the soul. Right. Like, again, it's easy to be dis like disconnected, but this is... I, you, I don't know what... You guys are the ones that are disconnected. You've been misled. Most cuts of meat are, I think they're like, some of it is glute. So a lot of it's like <clears> leg, <throat> I think. So this is like someone's ass meat, essentially, like a cow's ass. No, not someone's. No. Ass meat. I don't want to eat that. Who would want to eat that? Right. This, this is this is a sirloin steak. It's not someone's ass chick. I just prefer the way it tastes. I prefer the fat. I love ribeyes. I love sirloin steaks. Short ribs are one of my favourites, and actually, right up there would be oxtail. Um, I get it as much as I can, and I also include things like bone marrow, add butter, um, just to increase fat if necessary. Whole eggs are very easy, convenient, and cheap. So it's just a nice, affordable way to get you to satiety so if you... you know they're secretly wishing they could eat this stuff <laughs> it's just to have some butter melt on eggs and a nice juicy steak i'm sure that like i would be you know i'm getting hungry just watching it <laughs> you've got a small amount of meat you know you can just add eggs until you're full and that's perfectly fine you can pretty much live on eggs and then once a week on a friday i take myself down to something is feeling like cannibalism here <laughs> right that's what it feels no that's it what feels... again throwing out silly words like cannibalism to eat your own kind that's what cannibalism is not to eat the flesh, the meat from ruminant animals, if I'm a human, that, that's not cannibalistic. Like a it, lot right? of these carnivores, they're like, you see this like crazy meat hungry look in their eyes. Yeah, it's like a control or like a dominance thing almost. Yes, we're predators, embrace it. I'm feeling like, um... And also, well, you you're prey because you're herbivores, right? You can't live off of eggs. No, please show me. Yes, you can thrive on eggs. One study that supports healthy long-term lives <laughs> off of just eggs. He's like, you can practically live off of eggs. Yes, you can. Not really. I think like eggs contain every single essential nutrient that we need to consume. That's what essential nutrients are, right? We need to consume them because we don't make them. Plants, you're lacking multiple nutrients that we actually need. Eggs contain the lot. You can't say that about every single edible plant in one bowl. That still falls short. We eggs would beat every single edible plant in one bowl. One egg has about the, the, the maximum limit you should be having of dietary cholesterol. Again, that you've been severely misled. Your brain's made out of saturated fats and cholesterol. Every single cell in your body, trillions, is coated in cholesterol. It's how we synthesize practically every single hormone. It's, for, it's a very misinterpreted molecule. And, you know, you, you certainly don't know what you're talking about here when you're talking about cholesterol. You, you can consume 20 eggs a day. It's not a problem. I've seen people, I've seen carnivores eat like 10 eggs a day. Yeah. I would like to see, I would like to see carnivores that have been on a carnivore diet for a while get some testing done. And I would like well, to see do. their no, tests. No, no, no. Carnivores release their blood results. Yes. And guess what? Their cholesterol, their cholesterol is high? through the yeah, roof. Yeah, I'm not shocked. Their LDL cholesterol is like twice as high as it should be. It's There's no such thing as LDL cholesterol. LDL is a lipid protein that carries the one cholesterol around in the blood. You don't even know what cholesterol is, so you probably shouldn't be talking about it. Not more. Yeah, but they're not sweating. But they don't believe, no, they, they think that the LDL myth, it's all myth. But they well, don't. Yes, it is a myth. Look up the Oreo statin experiment, and then you might sort of 
start to understand what's going on there. Oh, they don't sweat. They don't, they don't need <laughs> sunscreen anymore. They don't need so. sunscreen. They don't sweat. <laughs> and they're happier than you. They're happier than you. I mean, I'm not depriving myself of food, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess and say, yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. But they, of, but they might die from a heart attack at 55. Bunch of depressed vegans. <laughs> the lower your cholesterol is, the higher all-cause mortality is. People that die of heart attacks are often very, very low in cholesterol. They have a low LDL count. The chart farm, which is just down the road from here, and I'll buy a little bit of seafood, um, usually wild mackerel. And the reason for that is, first of all, I think it's one of the healthiest, safest options in terms of seafood. It's wild, it's, it's healthier than farmed. Um, it's a smaller oily fish, so you know not too high in heavy metals or anything like that. You've got higher levels of D3, K2, and you've got a lot of DHA, and I believe that DHA is very, very important. And I just like to mix it up as well. About 20% of your lipids in the brain are made out of DHA. Docosahexaenoic acid, look it up, doesn't exist in plants. You know, if you're one of those people that are happy to consume ground beef and eggs every day, the same way, at the same time, that's great. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can be very, very healthy and you don't need or require variety or to try and, you know, find different cuts and things like that. Where are you getting that claim? If you're one of those people that could eat, what do you say, beef and eggs every day and that's it, that's fine. You could be very, very healthy eating just beef and eggs. Show me. Show We've got all the evidence we need. Stable isotope testing. Look that up. We've eaten throughout human history around 80% fatty animal products, mostly consisting of ruminant animals, so red meat. You know, the stuff that's supposed to be so evil and dangerous that's, that's going to kill us. Yes, you can be very, very healthy. Look at the Maasai. Look at the Inuit. I mean, one study. Some... Why would you need a study? But what, the studies aren't the be all and end all. Do you need a study to show you that the moon exists? Do you need a study to show that the earth isn't flat? I mean, it's just crazy. Thing besides, right. some guy said it on the internet. Show me one study that you could eat nothing but beef and eggs and you'll be top notch. Guys, this is just a bunch of body parts. It's just a bunch of body parts. Also, the sausages, first it's of all. like ribs. Sausages are processed meats. That's I don't eat sausages, but you wouldn't know that. It's class one carcinogen. <laughs> um, it's a bunch of random body parts shoved into an intestinal casing, spiced up to kind of make it taste a little better. No, I don't eat that. Do you know if, like, I bet if human meat was in one of these bins. Wouldn't even know. No one Couldn't would even know. Do. Dude, <laughs> yes. Like. <laughs> okay, so we've basically got meat here, right? We're more similar to pigs. We've got some pork chops over on the, the right of the screen there. You've got some Iberica pork chops. That's the stuff that I like. And then you've got some lamb loin, some lamb cutlets. You've got some braising steak there. And you've got some different varieties of pork sausages. Bacon in the top right. Lamb shanks in the middle of the back. And over the far left there, you've got some ground beef, I guess, or I think, or maybe it's even ground venison. It looks more like beef, though. It's not quite as rich in color. <laughs> it looks nothing like human anatomy, guys. Okay. If, if somebody know. mixed in like a human steak in there, you would know because it's, it's very, very. No, you wouldn't know because you don't know what food looks like. I would know. Very similar. It's just flesh. It's body parts. Uh, it's not necessarily um, needed. I don't take any medications. I personally don't take any supplements either, including electrolytes. Um, even though not having a colon actually puts me at higher risk of regulating electrolytes, I don't really seem to have any issues just consuming readily. No, he didn't eggs, have a colon. Uh, high quality salt and taste. <laughs> yeah, I don't fart. I don't fart. Water when I'm thirsty. <laughs> That's it. I seem to do just fine. I don't really get any of those cramp like symptoms or fatigue. I, I don't really seem to suffer, so I just keep it simple. I realize there's a lot of concerns about lack of nutrients like vitamin C in red meat, perhaps even fiber. Firstly, vitamin C is present within red meat and other animal products. Yes, it's very low, but when you're not consuming carbohydrates or any substrates that are metabolized as glucose, you're not having to seek so much vitamin C in your foods. And the reason why that is, is because molecularly, vitamin C and glucose are very, very similar. So they compete for absorption. When you take the carbohydrates out of the diet, you're absorbing all of the vitamin C that's found in meat. And that meat See, I've heard this. People keep saying that in the comments. I've heard this, but no one has actually provided a study. I don't have scurvy, so there's no vitamin C deficiency. If I had a vitamin C deficiency, I would have scurvy. We don't need to have studies to report on things that we just know are facts. Or anything supporting this? Like, I know they're, they, I know they're saying it, and they put up a little graph right there with vitamin C and glucose. I'm not making this stuff up. I've learned this stuff because it, they're facts. Glucose and, like, it's supposed to, like, be supportive. But I'm just curious if he put any studies. No. Okay, of course not. Yep. No, it's an anecdote, and I'm also offering some information along the way. So... If somebody can send me a study on this whole glucose, like carb- Glucose and vitamin C molecules are very, very similar. So in the body, they compete for absorption. Lots of things found in plants confuse the body because they're similar, but not exactly the same as certain nutrients found in animal products. That's basically how this works. Carbohydrate vitamin C thing, because um, people did get scurvy. One yes, sure, not eating meat. Once upon a time, from lack of vitamin C, right? So I would like to yeah. know, um, 
if that's true? Well, yes, sure, that's true. It, during the Napoleonic Wars, at least, they used to feed the soldiers that had scurvy horse meat because it's an anti scurbotic agent. If people can just eat red meat and get enough vitamin C, I, I haven't seen any studies, nobody's linked it. So if somebody could link that, please, I would love to see it. Well, we don't have scurvy, so there's no vitamin C deficiency. Yeah, I'm not just going by the Kent study. I'm not just going by the, <laughs> the, the Kent, Kent carnivore graph. <laughs> Look at the title. I'm not talking about graphs and science. This is an anecdote. <laughs> meets all of our needs. I don't have scurvy, so I have no vitamin C deficiency, nor does any other carnivore on the planet. In terms of fiber, well, fiber is not essential. You absolutely yeah, do not need to consume any fiber whatsoever to prevent your bowels. That's an absolute myth. The best thing about the carnivore diet for me, this beautiful way of life, not only did it cure my depression and multiple other ailments, but it just simplified my life. And so I spend very little time in my days thinking about food, you know, in the kitchen, prepping meals for work, none of that. It, I basically know what I'm going to eat. I spend very little time well, going like shopping, crap, right? it's really, really easy. And I come home and I take my meat out, sit it there and it can mind its own business for a few hours. It's not really in my mind. When I finally get hungry, I'm in the kitchen for like 20 minutes, maybe. And then I'm done. I'm it. I don't have to prep lunches for work. You know, carnivores don't burn, remember? Because I'm not eating any food when I'm at work. I've got so much energy. I don't require a lunch. In the very beginning, it's totally different because you're switching from a carbohydrate heavy diet to a diet devoid of carbs and, and high in fats and proteins. And so you typically get cravings. You're going to feel hungry quite frequently. I was easily eating three meals a day where after a couple of months, oh, I was bare, able to like- Oh, hand in the meat. I like how he's also, he has like the, the deer antlers in the background. Yeah, just gonna... Like he's like, yep, I'm, a, I'm officially a man after- This is actually how we did this house before I even went carnival, funnily enough. I just always like that sort of log cabin look. For this 555 days. He like wants, when you walk in to be like, oh, are you carnivore? <laughs> <laughs> When you're sitting there eating beef with your bare hands and you've got a cow on It's a bacon stuffed lamb's heart, by the way. On your pillow, and you've got deer antlers to the corner of the room, and on your nightstand, and right behind you. I mean, it's cringe. It's too much. It's too much dead animal memorabilia. We get it. You're eating beef with your bare hands. We get it, bro. You love- And you're sitting there with beanies on inside like it's freezing cold winter. Oh, fucking killing animals. Two meals a day and occasionally snack. And then after that, I was playing with one meal a day and- we go back and forth, you know, I wasn't quite there yet. But now I only eat once a day, maybe twice a day, once a week. What's happened for me is that over time, um, it's been well over 18 months now, I have reduced the frequency and increased the amount that I'm eating in one sitting. And that works really, really well for me. Again, it just simplifies life. And so at this point, I'm not thinking about breakfast, lunch and dinner. I'm not even thinking about, I have to have breakfast to go to work. No, I, I don't even bother with breakfast. Um, maybe once every two weeks, I'll have a breakfast. Usually I'll come home and have a decent meal that sees me through and by the time I wake up, I'm still full, I'm still neutrified and I've got what feels like all the energy in the world. And I actually feel better when I go to work on an empty stomach, you know, I'm still running. He's on. demonstrating how physically <laughs> vigorous he is. He's just showing us that like, guys, I don't just sit at a desk all day. I'm like cleaning windows. Well, yeah, that's my job. If my job was sitting at a desk all day, I would have me sitting at a desk all day and film that. Moving my body. Right. So this steak is like empowering me to have more energy. Which well, yeah, that's how I'm moving around right there. I've, I've eaten steak and now I'm alive and I can go and tend to my day job, which happens to be fairly physical. So I was just going to say, I feel like he was looking for a purpose. And I feel like this, this diet gave him that purpose in a way, or a purpose. Um... It's given me more of a purpose now, you know, because I'm helping people. That, that's certainly more rewarding than cleaning windows. Um, it means more to me and hopefully those people. So sure. And I feel like you can find the same thing with veganism. Sure. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, that's what people, that's a kind of worth saying about vegans. Oh, they're just looking for a community to belong to. Right. Like, here's the thing, for me, that, that wasn't it. For me, I went with the science and the most compelling argument, but let's just say- He went with the logical consistency there, yeah, with the science. Hey, you guys don't believe me. And let's say there are a lot of vegans who do gravitate towards community. Why not go towards a community that causes less harm? Right. What, to animals or humans? eliminates is trying to eliminate animal exploitation um and again I, I source my food from regenerative farms and butchers with pasture for life programs there's no exploitation there's no suffering it's just food it has definitely more science supporting it why not go towards that community if you need right. that connection there's no money in the science on our end there's lots of money in, in your science again like i say look at who funds the studies look at the dark history it's very shady from the, the meal from the day before but that's how i like to function and like I say, it's just so simple when you live your life that way. 
only get up, wash, put clothes on and leave the house. It's life changing and I can't unfeel what I feel now. There's no way I could go back. It's, it's a night and day difference between both lifestyles. I feel like I've been reborn back depression. then when I was eating all the, yeah. the healthy yeah. foods and all the balanced right diet too. foods. Lobster. I was miserable that in and, and weak and my moods would go up and down. I could control how I felt and my emotions and it was kind of pathetic, honestly. Uh, I thought there was something really, really He's so confused why I'm like healthy foods, like he just doesn't know wrong with me. And I mean there was, but who knew that those problems were triggered with foods, so-called healthy foods as well. Sure, I had industrial seed oils in the diet. Sure, I did have dessert after my dinner, but I feel like the majority of people that try to be healthy, you know, they have a mixture of foods, the, the grains, the fruits, the vegetables, the different meats and fish, and they season it, and they have all these herbs and spices, and they have teas, coffees, treat yourself to a dessert every now and again, and they're fine. Well, I'm obviously a, a sensitive person with my health, and there are many, many people out there who are struggling with all kinds of ailments that this diet, this beautiful way of life can address meaningfully. The, the only problem with that claim, if that were true, when we track populations that eat more plants, when we do like the blue zones, <laughs> co cohorts, co cohorts, or when we look at the epidemiology or when we do food, don't ever look at the epidemiology food frequency questionnaires or anything that's tracking people. No, don't look at those either where they class pizza as red meat again. You need to look into what you're talking about here. You, you probably just have no idea. On how they ate. We would see a higher prevalence of the issues he's talking about. No, Hong Kong eat the most red meat on the planet. They also live the longest and have the highest IQ. Right? You would expect to see that. You would see people that eat meat have a higher uh, prevalence of, you know, less, less mental health. Yes, they do. Issues, no burning in the sun. Yes, they do. And, um, no sweating. That's true too. Better health outcomes long term, and then people yep. in plants would be depressed. They have mood swings. You'd, you'd see that, right? If this was reliable, or if this was consistent. Yes, we do see that with the evidence, but it's not. Right. It just isn't, right? The when we track populations that eat predominantly plant based. Yeah, but you can eat a lot of plants, but as long as you're eating some meat, some eggs, and things like that, you're probably going to be okay if you're not a very sensitive individual. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about your vegans. I'm carnivore. I'm very sensitive to food. This is basically mandatory for me to not be depressed, to not have acid reflux, and I have different skin conditions. There's a whole host of other benefits that I've become aware of. But you guys, maybe you're not that sensitive. You just care so much about the animals, but you just really hate humans. I'm not really sure. But if if you had whole countries going vegan, and whole countries going carnivore, it would be very evident as to what is more robust in terms of diet. We see better health outcomes, right? Less chronic disease, less all cause mortality risk, less risk of cancers according to your epidemiological studies. Yes, yeah, sure. Like, I, and that's significantly more reliable than just an individual anecdote. Yeah. No, it's not. Uh, well, I feel like there's this trend of like, <sighs> everything being a conspiracy. So like people mm -hmm. don't want, people are no longer are interested in what like the data shows. Um, well, this ended up being a conspiracy fact with the whole diet heart hypothesis, you know, the villainizing of saturated fats and saying, you know, sugar's not a problem, it's fat. Uh, which is interesting. And I, I feel like it's people wanting to feel autonomous with their bodies and their choices. But again, um, people, people study things like this for a reason, right? Because they're looking for optimal health. They're looking to- They're looking for money, most likely. To decrease heart, heart disease. Because um, there's, there's, there's a lot of people dying from these things, right? So like- Yeah, and people are becoming very, very rich during the process. It, uh, I just don't know why we're just abandoning data. Yeah, the know? conspiracy that we're not just abandoning data. We are getting rid of the pseudoscience and the propaganda that everybody working for, for like the, the <laughs> nutritional expert community, they're all working to try and make you sick. I mean, that's right. a, that's an interesting conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. It's reality, but, um, I'm just not buying it. And I don't know why you would either. And you can just read this like you can read studies yeah you know yeah sure but if you're an idiot then you're not going to know the difference between a robust scientific experiment or just some associative data or correlative data yeah data like it's not like it's not like they just present results without showing like they have right. to they're like they legally have they to document show all yeah document they adjust these things all the time it's very, very corrupt, the world that we live in. And again, look at who funds the studies. You should have everything from start to finish. Um, and you can still not believe it, but you're just, you're, you're, you are standing on very like thin ice. If you're, you know, you, you really have no ground to stand on. I don't know. 
That's a pretty good definition of veganism, isn't it, really? I don't get it. Keep it a little tighter around the house, Ken. All right? <laughs> keep, it, keep it tight in there. Just uh, nope. careful what slips out, if you know nope. what I'm saying. Let's just say, right, that me, like, drinking the blood of the innocent would, like, cure my ailments. Right. I'm just going to try and find another route to cure them, whether it's medication, whether it's... But I'm not doing that. I did find another route or route, and that is the carnivore diet, which is an ancestrally appropriate diet for human beings. It's in line and in keeping with our genetics. OK, a uh, different diet of plants, right? Not everything we should just take and take and take if it benefits us, even right. if those things are. What about the plants then? What about the monocropping, the degradation of ecosystems, destroying the little fellas, the, the insects, the bees, the squirrels, the rabbits, all of those guys? No. Take, take, take me, me, me. No. Are chronic diseases or mental health. Right. Good point. I have a better point. If human beings were healthier, which they will be on an animal based diet, we're not taxing the environment with the health care and the treatment and the global emissions there in that sector. Look into that. I communicate with such a variety of people around the world, different ages, different blood types, different ethnicities, different religious beliefs. It doesn't matter. It seems that humans are designed to eat this stuff. You know, if you're consuming red meat, it's not inflammatory. It's, full. it's something you might not get, but in our realm, I get a lot of this. What about? Blood types. Maybe you did better because you're this type and I might not do better because I'm this blood type. Again, don't worry about that. We're humans. We're all designed to eat meat. With all the nutrients you need. So there's no culprits in the diet. It's not going to aggravate your arthritis, right? It's not going to continue to store oxalates in the system. It's not going to continue to elevate your blood glucose or add fat to your liver, whatever it might be. So my message is, honestly, if you're struggling, what have you got to lose? Just try it. Set yourself a six week challenge. It takes six weeks building up to that point where you are now carnivore and then do that for six weeks. So you're talking about three months where you're starting to change your diet. And I do think that that's long enough. You will get your answer. Um, most likely you'll be able to come off medications or at least decrease medications, the frequency, the potency. Um, your inflammation will come down, you know, and that's, that's what we want. Three months is not long-term health. I didn't say that three months is long-term health. I said in three months, you'll most likely get your answer. Outcomes, but whatever. Anyway, that was Ken Carnivore. You don't, you're not, you're just not listening. Uh, I think that you do need more heme iron. I think you do need more B12, DHA, EPA. I think you need a good steak and some eggs mm, cooked in butter. Yeah, that's what I would suggest. That's what I'm going to eat right now, actually. For everybody. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thanks, guys. And thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully you found that somewhat entertaining. I was certainly entertained. It's all fun and games. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.